I'm playing an endless space shooter. It's like Galaga, except it's not. I'm not using a controller. I'm flying by hands. It's all computer vision. Not only that, it's all running on my browser and it can run completely offline. I'm not even connected to the internet. In this tutorial, I want to show you just how easy it is to set up and build this game from ground up. Although it would help if you already have some web development background, but as usual, I'm not going to skip any lines of code in this tutorial. So you can pick it up from any level you are at. But first, a quick demo of what the final game is going to look like. I can play this game as if I'm holding the joystick of an airplane. I've always wanted to do that. As soon as I do that, the game starts. An infinite stream of boulders come down from the top. I can steer the airplane in any direction to avoid them. It's so responsive to my hand movements that I could make these boulders fall even faster and still be able to avoid them. We will implement collision detection with the boulders and give the player 4 tries before it's game over. I'll show you exactly how you can make the computer vision task super responsive without adding too much bulk. The game pauses when the hands are taken off and resumes as soon as hands come up. And if you stick to the end of the tutorial, I'll show you how you can play with the audio track using your hands. As you can see when the hands are off the screen, the game pauses making the audio muffled down. So if you want to build this super responsive computer vision game, then tag along as I build this from scratch. To not make the video too long, the tutorial will be posted as a series of 6 videos. You'll find the playlist link under the video or on my channel's homepage. So as mentioned, you don't need any prerequisite for this tutorial. We will use Next.js, so just make sure you have Node installed. Follow the link in the description to get Node up and running on your system. Then you can proceed with this tutorial. So right from the scratch, I'll first create a folder on my desktop. I'll name it Meteor Dash and I'm going to open a terminal window here and open this folder using VS Code. Here hitting Ctrl J on Windows or Command J on Mac will bring up the terminal window. Here I'm going to create a Next.js app by the command npx create next app at the rate latest dot. So it is going to create within this directory itself. Proceed Y yes. And I'm going to use the defaults here. You can check the defaults that I've used. This is going to give us a boilerplate Next.js app. I'm going to go to the app directory and onto the page tsx file and delete everything that is inside the main tag. I'm also going to make this justify center. Now in this video, I'm going to load the media pipe JS model and detect hand gestures. And in the next video, we're going to build upon that to create the rocket and move the rocket using these detections. So for this, I'm going to create a separate component and I'm going to place this component on the top left side of the page where there will be the webcam feed of the user. So I'm going to create a container for that. I'm going to give it class name absolute and place it using the top and left properties. And I'm going to place it above everything else. So Z30. And inside that, I'm going to create a hand recognizer component. So this is basically going to handle the recognition tasks and it is going to notify this home page component using a callback function. And that callback function, I'm going to say a set hand results. So I'm going to create this attribute when I'm going to create this component itself. So I'm going to say set hand results is basically a callback function. And I'm going to define this callback function up on top here. It's a simple function that just returns void. And now I'm going to go ahead and create this component. So on the root of my project, I'm going to create new file and components slash and recognizer dot tsx. So it's going to create within a components directory where I'm going to create other components in the future. So here I'm going to use tsrafce, the ES7 plus snippet that gives me the boilerplate code for a Next.js component. And in the page.tsx file, I'm going to place my cursor here and then hit command dot. I think it's control dot in case of Windows and add import from the components directory where we defined it. Now we'll have to define this property as well. So I'm going to go to the component and here in the property, I'm going to say set and results. And it is going to be defined as a function that returns void. And I'm going to destructure this here, set hand results so that we are able to call it inside this component itself whenever we are detecting the hand gestures. Now let me go ahead and run this app npm run dev and if I command click on this it is going to show up in the default browser and you can see it is showing the hand recognizer component on the top left corner. Let's go ahead and replace this text by the video feed of the user and then we'll be loading the model and make detection of the hands. So in the hand recognizer component inside this div I'm going to replace it by a video and first I'm going to take a reference of this HTML element using useRef. So I'm going to define it as video ref here and on top I'll define 
use ref snippet and this is going to be video ref i'm going to import this use ref and set it as null now when the component loads as we said there will be two things first is to load the video and show the video and then load the media pipe js model which will be used to detect hands for that i'm going to use the use effect hook so use effect snippet and on load we we are going to run this so i'm going to set this array as empty that means on load of the component this code block will run i'm going to import use effect and here i'm going to write init video and model and i'm going to define this function as a separate function here const and this is going to be an async arrow function it doesn't take any parameters so first we'll take the reference of this video element so const video element is equal to video ref dot current and do a check if video element does not exist then return and if it does exist then continue so i'm going to create another function to initialize the video so i'm going to call it init video and i'm going to pass the video element here i'm going to place my cursor here and then hit command dot and add missing function declaration and this is going to create outside the module scope that is fine because this can be a standalone function because we are already passing the video element here here we are going to use the web api's navigator to get the user stream so first i'm going to write const stream is equal to await navigator so since we are using await that is why we will have to make it async that is the reason why we are awaiting this function itself so navigator dot media devices dot get user media and it takes some options here we are going to say video is equal to true and in the video element that we passed we're going to set the source object is equal to stream actually this video element will be of type html video element the reason it did not get automatically created when we created this function is because we did not define the user f type we could define it as html video element this is just to make sure the type safety is maintained and after we set the stream to the source object we are going to set an event listener video element dot add event listener and event will be on loaded data so loaded data we're going to run this function which is going to be an arrow function which is nothing but video element dot play so it is going to start playing the video as soon as the data is available after the setup is done now if we run the app it is saying that we have to use client so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to set the whole uh, page itself the home page component itself as use client because this is going to run on the client only and is asking for allow camera and we can see that our camera is there now i'm going to make this a little bit smaller so i'm going to say width is equal to 24 so you can see the video feed on the top left so what we are going to do is that the hand recognizer component is basically going to be responsible for detecting hands and on the page we are going to use these classes to specify their position size etc so that is why we set this as width 24 on the page.tsx file now let's continue building the hand recognizer component after the video is loaded we are ready to initialize the model so i'm going to write another function called await init model and create this function again so here we're going to load the media pipe js library so if i go to the documentation and here on the left side we are going to choose the hand landmark detection and onto the web as you can see first we'll have to install a npm package and then there is some initialization code so it uses the web assembly so first we'll have to load the web assembly and then the hand landmarker object that comes from the npm library that we installed uh, will be able to pass that web assembly along with some attributes and that will initialize the landmark detector and finally you'll be able to call this detect function along with image or video element and that will give you the detections now if you go to the overview tab so you can see that it detects about 20 landmarks for each hand and in our case we'll be using this point 6 um, for both hands to detect the tilt of the hand and the rotation using which we'll be able to move the rocket around on the screen so first we'll have to install as we said the npm package so i'm going to copy this npm code and stop the service and install the npm package then write const webassembly is equal to await i'll make it an async function file set resolver that comes from the media pipe package that we installed dot for vision task and here we'll have to specify the cdn location from where webassembly is going to load so i'm going to paste the location here and then const and landmarker 
this is called a handle and marker that is again coming from the media pipe library that we installed dot create from options as first argument we are going to pass the web assembly to load and then it takes some options first of which is the base options where we'll specify the model path from where to load the model so this is again going to be a cdn location so as you can see it is coming from google's location and then i'm going to delegate to gpu so we have options like gpu and cpu i'm going to use gpu here and number of hands i'm going to set two and running mode we have image and video i think for python library we have also live stream mode but i think in our case the video will suffice in fact i have run this model by specifically specifying live stream that is available in the python package it does not throw any errors it works the same way the video works so i'm not sure if the difference exists in the npm version of the package so if i go to their documentation and go to the python you can see running mode has live stream which actually does not exist in the web version we only have image and video but then again i can specify as live stream and it does not throw any error so i'm not sure if the difference exists here so moving on i'm going to return this uh, handle learn marker that we just initialized and when we are calling this init model i'm going to write const handle learn marker and this handle learn marker will be used to detect hand gestures so now i'm going to set an interval which will be used to periodically detect this hand positions so first will be an arrow function and i'm going to run it every second for now but obviously we'll be making it much faster later just to test let me run it every second and here i'm going to write const detections and land marker and detect for video i'm going to use the video element as the first argument and as you can see as the second argument it takes a timestamp so that is just going to be the date dot now and this is going to give us the detections and now i'm going to process the results in a separate function process detections and here i'm going to pass the detections and also the function pointer for set hand results i'm going to place my cursor here and then hit command dot to add this function and here first i'm just going to console log the detections just to check what we are receiving now if we run this app npm run dev let me open it up in chrome if i bring up the console you can see every second we are getting hand landmarks and if we bring up two of our hands we can see that we are getting two hands here so the first one is handedness which has two elements zero and one the zeroth one is left and one has the right so it is basically giving us a score and then we are going to go to the landmarks object which is basically an array so we know the zeroth one is the landmarks for the left hand and there are 20 landmarks as we said and the one is basically the landmarks for the right hand and there are 20 as well so we will be taking the sixth element or the sixth landmark for each hand and detect the tilt and the rotation of the rocket so you can see the video is not rightly oriented this is my left hand but in the video it looks like it is right hand so i think i'm going to use the mirror state here for showing the video and for that i'm going to go to the tailwind config.ts file and within the theme right after the extends i'm going to write scale key value pair is going to be minus one colon minus one so that way we'll be able to use this as our tailwind class so in the hand recognizer component in the video i'm going to write class name and minus scale minus x minus one if you save it now the video is mirrored this is my left hand and this is my right hand so now it looks more uh, natural and we can play the game uh, as we are supposed to i'm going to give it a little bit more styling just a border two and border stone 800 as the color and i'm also going to give it rounded large so we are already detecting our hand uh, from uh, from the video every second there are detections and we'll be parsing through these detections and trying to find out gestures and move the html components on the page in our next video